Are you racing 70.3 Marbella this year? If so, this is a great video for you because in it, you're going to talk to two very experienced coaches and also a local Spanish coach who's going to give you the absolute ins and outs of what you need to know to have an absolute belter of a race in Marbella. So um, who are we? My name is Coach Steve or Stephen Moody from Dublin, Ireland, and I do a series of race reviews on my YouTube channel. And in that, I always reach out to the guys who know the most about the local courses. And in it, I am delighted to have Javier Almarcha, a local coach from Spain, who actually tra was a, has a lot of athletes going through um, Marbella course historically and this year. And I am delighted to have you on the, court, on the, on the show today. Javier, how are you? Fine. Thanks, uh, Steve. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So tell us a little bit about your coaching background and your experience of Marbella, so the guys know. Uh, overall, let's say I have been uh, coaching triathlon and other endurance sport for over 15 years. I race myself. I haven't raced uh, Marbella, but I have uh, some athletes around six, seven that have raced uh, there. So I have their feedback and I have plan uh, beforehand the, the course for them so I have a knowledge about what the, the athletes are going to to find in, in on race day. Perfect. So you're an experienced athlete, you're an experienced coach and you've got it put people and you've got people on the course. Fantastic. So this is going to be brilliant for the watchers. So let's hop straight into the course and actually start talking about first up that's going to appear is our swim course. It now Again, I've not done Marbella. I've had a couple of athletes who've raced it, but um, looks like a simple enough course, one loop. Um, what's the water quality like? And is it normally wetsuit legal? Or what sort of, what's the feedback from your athletes? Uh, it's going to be wetsuit legal. If It used to be on, on a spring in April, May. This is the first year that it's going to be on October. But anyway, it's a pretty cold water because even it's a Mediterranean Sea, it's kind of where the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, enter the Mediterranean Sea, so it's fed with cold water. So definitely, it's going to be wet to legal. We like that a lot. A lot of our, a lot of our newer athletes are, are big fans of wet suit. And what's the in terms of is there much wildlife in the water? As in, I've swam in Barcelona, Ironman a couple of times, and I've met a couple of jellyfish. Are there any jellyfish or anything to be worried no, about? No, the the water is not really clear. But anyway, there is nothing to see, just sun. Fantastic. And in terms of the, um, does it tend to get wavy or is it, there, is, is it a nice smooth swim from and you I know you went the first time you've done it? Not it choppy. Not but, choppy? Uh, once a year was good to have because of that, but usually it's, it's not very, very choppy. So nothing to be worried about at firstly. Yeah, no, and, and you're, you're correct, 100% right about highlighting that it's the first time it's in October. This is because it's they're almost practicing for the World Champs next year. Yeah, um, it's going to be on November, I think. So, yeah, yeah definitely. So, I think it will be a, a sold-out race with lots of people coming to get a bit of sneak preview of what will be at the was it 70.3 World Champs. Um, so, it just it seems like it's a, it's a beach start. Um, is, it, do we, is, do they, is it a running start or is it um, how do the guys enter the water? It's a beach star and it's a rolling star. Fantastic. And is the it looks like it was the big red boys are kind of our turning boys. So we're we're, we're into the water, and then we're taking a right up, and then two was it right again, and then back in. And um, is there any currents or anything to be worried about, or is is, is it a, is anything that the guys need to know? The 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 thing that is more important to note is that when you do the first uh, turn to the left, then you have a, a straight of five to 600 meters that is just the sun is racing and it's just in front of your eyes. So uh, Cynthia Google will be definitely a, a good choice for, for that part of the swimming because it's early on the morning, it's around 8 a.m. So definitely you are going to, to have the sun just on, on your eyes, on the horizon. Yeah. That, that's key. As and I just uh, completed 70.3 Duisburg in, in Germany, and the, the sun was rising. And I'm, I didn't wear tinted goggles. I didn't expect the sun to be that bright at that time because it's around an eight o'clock swim start. So I couldn't see for one, one of the lengths completely, and I ended up nearly swimming into the side. And um, 
Okay, so it's beach start. It's not going to be choppy. It's going to be wetsuit legal. There will be sun rising, so tinted goggles, great tip there. Any other hints or tips you would give to your new guys swimming? Um, if they, even if they're nervous swimmers, what would, advice would you give them? Uh, I've just said rolling the start is uh, uh, really important to pick the 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 time that you are going to to the, the, the for the for the swimming uh, pack that is not really faster than you, but it can be a, a tiny bit faster than you, so you can make the most of the string line, but not to the point that people are going to get over you, and because this kind of uh, cause you. Uh, to be nervous and, and the like. So it's a, a really easy swim uh, course. So just pick a, a group that is a tiny bit faster and try to, try to make the most of their the feet. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just a, it's a really valid point that you make, Javier, that um, for those new to Ironman racing, there's a, was it Ironman, they, they used to do mass swim starts where everybody jumped in all at once and it was terrifying for people who are weaker swimmers. But now what Ironman do is they have a what they call as a rolling swim start, whereas Javier is 100 percent right. As in what you do is you, on, the, on the morning, you'll turn up and there will be corrals or areas where you put yourself in. And typically they're under 25 minutes, 30, 25, to 30 minutes, 30 to 35 so in five minute increments. And you put yourself in the corral or the, the pen that is the um, equates to what you expect to finish the 1.9 K swim in. And then what Ironman will do is. They will sort of start easing everyone in in a very controlled manner. And as you can see from the picture here, you've got the two, the the, uh, the volunteers um, holding their arms out like this. And ooh, you can't actually get me into the video. The And every th uh, three to four seconds, a beep will go. They'll lift their hands up. And then three or four athletes will enter the water at the same time. So, and again, backing up what Javier has correctly said, is what you really want to do is put yourself in a group with roughly maybe a little bit faster swimmer than you but definitely not way faster or definitely not way slower because if you put yourself in way faster a swim corral two things will happen one the stronger swimmers will swim over you and they don't care you put yourself in the wrong corral and it's a bit dumb but also the other thing that and javier has also kind of alluded to it is said that you miss the chance to kind of draft off someone's feet as in like you know what it's in the pool and you're swimming it's much easier staying on someone's feet exactly the same in Ironman swimming and if you catch someone's feet or stay on their hip you draft you save yourself a lot of energy which is key as you know Javier in a 70.3 race so some great swim tips there and we'll talk a little bit about transition and um, we come out then at a transition and it, it's up on the beach is it a long run up to transition it's a bit uh, long but you have uh, plenty of carpets so it's not an issue and just a couple of things to point out about the the swimming is like the day before usually the boats are just uh on the course and the day of uh, so you can recon the the course and the day of the race day uh on the morning there is plenty of space so you can warm up without uh, being in a hurry let's say great so there's an option to swim a day before but again just in case it goes yeah. sore and there's also a practice swim on the side. Is that to the kind of the left of the swim start, or where do they typically have the swims swim practice? Uh, I think that is to the to the where the where the sun is coming. Let's say. Okay, cool. So to the, I need to work my, my geography. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. But again, there's a swim up, swim up, swim practice start in the morning. Fantastic, and yeah. um, great tips there as well. Um, okay, so we'll talk a little bit about transition. It's a it's a single or a split split transition from Marbella, Javier. It's a single one. Okay, so everything's all in the in the same location. And what what are your kind of key tips you give to your new athletes in terms of transition beforehand? Do you ask them to walk the course, or was it um, anything? Any tips that you give them? Is uh, when you rock your your bike, it's like pay really attention where your bike is because. Sometimes you are with the, all the hype, you are putting your bike, chatting with friends. And the day after, when you just exit from the swimming, it's like, where is my bike? And you can lose really, really a big chunk of time trying to find your, your bike. 
Yeah, we, we call that race brain in Ireland, as in where you come out, and these are very intelligent people. There's lots of doctors, lawyers, very pe- successful businessmen. And then like they, they run out and they've completely, as I said, they just put Lycra on them and a the Garmin watch and their brain goes to mush. So you're right, as in like, make sure you know where your bike is and where your, your bag is. And we'll talk a little bit about transition bags now. And my top tip I give guys is actually take photographs. Well, everyone has smartphones now. So like you sort of go, what's your landmark? My bike is right beside that tree or to the left of that portal loo or la la la. And again, it's because otherwise you're home and you're sort of going, where was it again? Was it? So again, yeah, you're right. Any other tips for T1 that you give your guys and getting out of the wetsuit and uh, was it anything else? Just before uh, exit the water, try to kick a bit your legs to 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 have more fluid on your on your legs, and because you are on a horizontal position, and it's like, don't be on a hurry, but make the most of 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 your training. Let's say is if you have trained so hard for that, you don't have to be on a hurry, but don't take it so slow that you are missing part of the of the uh, the, the time that you have to recover on the following legs. Yeah, no, absolutely. As in, like, I think there's, uh, yes, you, you want to get through transition purposefully with, and without kind of taking your time. And it is just sort of going, wow, I finished my first 9.k swim. I feel great, but sort of going, look, that's only the start of your day. And um, so be clear, be smooth, be focused and get through it. And um, that run up out of the beach, it's a great chance to start getting your wetsuit down. Don't don't waste time. If you're moving and you can take your wet the suit down to your waist, save a bit of time there. And um, get your goggles and your hat off, put them in your arm and just take that off there. That will be another transition tip. And then also you have we I recommend my guys to have walked the course the day before in terms of because when you you have to rack the bike and put your bags in the day before. Make sure you walk it as in this is where we're coming up and swim. My bike number is 300. That means on that rack. That means I have to run that way with the bike, with my helmet on. And then that's the mount line, etc. So key landmarks you should know. And um, I do cover these in some transition tips in the in the comments below. Now, myself and Javier have talked about transition bags. So I, again, for the newbie who has just done their local distance triathlon, what, do, what are we talking about? Have we, have we lost our mind? No. Ironman has a very specific system of transition because you think about it, there's 2,000 plus people in Marbella. Is that the, how many people normally race around? Okay, 2,000. Uh, around 1,000 or, or so, let's say. Grand. So loads of athletes and therefore they need a clean, what they call a clean transition. So there's just the bikes and then how they handle that. So like in your local transition on race, you're putting your, your runners beside it, your helmet, etc. But this is, much more compressed and it's a big machine right because our man do things very differently so what they have is they have a bag system for your swim to bike and your bike to run swim to bike is blue bike to run is red and therefore you have um you will have a rack system where you will have um in the blue bag you will have your helmet your bike shoes and um, anything else your say shades you want to put on if you want to put on a top etc if you want to change into a full set of clothes that's in your blue bag so when you come out of the water, and um, as I said, when you're coming out of the water here, you'll be running up in the transition, the, the racks will be here to run past. You pick up your blue bag and you put your wetsuit into that. You put your helmet on, then you go to get your bike, and then you go to the dismount line. So the bag system is key. And then again, it sounds a bit, oh my God, what to put in my blue bag, what to put in my red bag. It's more it's more it's a bit more common sense than, than you think so i've got a video that covers it, a little five minute video that shows you visually what i put in my bags and all the rest any other transition tips that you have to your guys have you is that after you have stated it's like doing a recon the day before or of that very same morning because usually when you you have the chance to 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 take a glance where your bike is where uh the uh swimming uh is, exit this so you have had it very clear on your mind and even when you are swimming in the last measure try to visualize uh what are you going to do for the next five minutes let's say so as you have said while running taking out the the wetsuit until your waist uh removing the googles and the cap if you have that on your mind for five minutes before it happens 
it will really makes a difference yeah it just becomes almost like a mental checklist you're going put hat off was it um goggles in hand wets it down and it becomes almost like a rhythm and all the rest no it's a really good tip so listen we we're, let's get on to the we're going to talk a little bit about the the bike but before we do, as in, a, I'm, I'm sure you're getting absolutely great information, Javier, who's got all the local knowledge. You're seeing me, who's who was a, just, you know, just sitting here looking pretty. But the, we would really like if you check out or enjoy the video, hit a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and please follow um, was it Javier on uh, his Instagram here. Drop him a DM if you have any questions. I'll, we'll give you more of his information at the end because he's a good guy to know. If you're going to be racing Spain, I'm pretty sure he's got all the insights on Barcelona and all that on all Victoria Gastes. This guy is the guy to know. So we'll move on to the bike course. Now, this is known as being one of the tougher bike courses on the cert on the 70.3 circuit in Europe. What what's your feedback on that? What's your how what do your athletes say so far on the course? It's a, a tricky uh, bike course because it's it has uh, like 1,500 meters of elevation for the 90 uh, case but it's uh, really funny because you can enjoy uh, the bike ride if you are a strong cyclist it's way better the the landscape is really good so it's hard but it's a, a kind of course that you can enjoy it it's a rewarding course i say like, like yeah. when like a course like for example on lanzarote as in yes there's and um, i'll show off i've done lanzarote and the it's yes, the climbs are can be can be hard, but if you pace them well, but you are, as I said, you every now and again, you do need to look around and go, wow, this is I'm doing an amazing thing, and the views are amazing. And on the on the road surfaces, what are the road surfaces like in Marbella, mate? It's a, a really mix. So the the first part, of the, let's say the three uh, first hundred meters, um, it's a bit with a single lane pothole, so. Unless you are very, very skilled uh, with putting your shoes on the fly, I will wait for that uh, sort of section to to happen before trying to put the, the feet inside the, the shoes. From then on, it's a uh, good tarmac. It's a warm tarmac, but unless you uh, ride really close to the ditch that has some debris, you only have to pay attention to certain areas for pole holes. But it's Overall, it's a, it's a good course for for bike riding. Great. Okay. Cool. And is it is it closed roads? As in, like, um, I know in the American seven dot trees, they tend to have them partially closed. Or do we have all of the the one loop of ninety k sort of locked uh, closed down? It's, it's closed road, even when you enter uh, the motorway for some case. Oh, oh, those motorway parts. Cool. Excellent. Um. Right, and the bit of the climbing again. I know Marbella. It's 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 actually known as being one of the hillier ones. And it does look like it's um, what you call it, 1,400, 500 meters of climbing. And um, any feedback from you on the on the climbs? What have your athletes said about these climbs? Which are the harder ones? Is it at the start? Is it at the end? What, what's the feedback? Uh, it can look like that that the the hardest one is the first one, but the tricky uh, part of that the the course is like first you climb to Ogen. That is like uh, a 10 case uh, climb with uh, 450 meters of elevation, let's say. Okay. Then it's uh, kind of downhill, but rolling that you can really make the most of the aero position. But the the real uh, triathlon begins when you uh, make the U-turn in Kartama, because those that section that is, high, is kind of downhill, but you don't notice that it's that downhill suddenly is uphill and it's an uphill that you don't notice that is really a climbing but it's like someone is dragging you back let's say oh, yeah, and yeah. so you have to to refrain for the hype of the first part being pushing that hard because on the way back it could be really tough Okay, so lots of lots of pacing at the at the start of the of the climbs and yeah. um, because the the harder climbs even though on paper look like that first 20k looks like the majority of climbing there's some lots of little ro rolling hills here that will burn out your legs and um, no absolutely and the, 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 the descents are they 
technical like Mallorca, as in or like as in lots of switchbacks? Are they straight descents, or what, what is it? They're much to the descending when you're coming down these big hills. Uh, especially on the on the last one, because the first one is not really a downhill; it's a slightly downhill, but it's it's really good for for like 30 k. You can be on the aero position and enjoy. And the last uh, descent is not that uh, technical; it's quite uh, wide. Is the tarmac is pretty good, and even if it seems that it's really downhill. You can keep pedaling for the vast majority of the descent. Okay, okay. No, it does look a, a good course. Okay, so you're we're out. Um, there's a couple of turnaround points, a couple of dog legs as well. So, as you said, okay. Now this is the million dollar question, which you asked about it. Everybody asks whenever course review <clears throat> I do. Is it a TT bike or a road bike course? What would you recommend to a first timer? If you are pretty newbie and you are not really used to climb with a with a city bike uh road bike with aerobus uh, will be the choice but if you are a more advanced triathlete uh having a city bike will be will pay dividends uh, especially on, on the rolling sections yeah. and even in the descent that you can get on the aero position because it's not that downhill so you can be on on the bike with on the bars and what about wind? <clears throat> Again, now these are guys that they're not <laughs> now they're getting greedy. They're, they're, they've heard TT bike. They went, yes, I love my TT bike. If they've got a disc wheel, is it is it a windy course at times? Is it exposed? Would would if you had the option of a TT bike and a disc wheel, would you go with that option? Usually, yes, but it's like the like the the swimming that usually is not choppy, but sometimes it's choppy. Okay. Usually, it's not windy, but when it, when it's windy, it's windy. So if you have the choice to on the morning uh, of the race to take a look of the forecast and even uh, make a last minute decision, but usually it's uh, uh, this wheel on the rear and on the front wheel, the one that you can handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's not, I think from experience myself, as I said, it's, it's more the front wheel that kind of gets shoved around and things get, I know people worry about disc wheels, but Typically, you're you're putting all the weight down on the disc wheel, so that that stabilizes it. Whereas the, if you can, the front wheel moves, a lot of things can happen. Okay, so closed roads, good surface. But as you said, if you it was it, there are I know it's kind of typical Spanish roads where the if you go too far to the right, there's kind of there can be kind of um, debris and some of those those little kind of humps on the side. But so definitely keep an eye on it. And um, it's good and hilly. Um, the, but the main the main hills you say from the 40k to 60k you know oh, sorry 60, 60 from 48k onwards um, and a yeah. good nice descent to bring yourself down into t2 at the end and if you got it tt bike will be your recommendation any other tips or feedback on the course just that in the outward leg you can see that it is a small loop uh when you arrive to coin or the likes you can see a like a branch that you only do it on the outward leg. Ah, yes, okay. okay. It's an extra loop for completing the 90 case. And in that particular uh, section, the road is kind of crap. Ah, uh, okay. So around the 33 mark, 33K mark here at Coin, as you said on the map, we go up yep. this dog leg, we go back down, and that's going to be that's going to be the, the, probably the worst part of the the road surface. Okay, yeah, cool. definitely. And is there much of is that much of a climb or is that flat? Is that? Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's slightly uphill, but it's two point five out and two point five back. Okay, it's not right. that much. Yeah, so you can suck it up as in probably good time to take on board fuel and nutrition, kind yeah. of make sure your legs are stretched out, and then on the way back, and then you're heading in, heading back into Puerto Buenos and um, for T two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, great tips, mate. Absolutely loving it. So then again. And in terms of your cutoff, oh, by the way, we didn't mention the cutoff. The cutoff of a swim, as per any standard 70.3, is one hour and 10 minutes to get in and get out. And then the next cutoff you have is the swim, your transition one time, and your bike time is five hours and 30 minutes. And just to feed back on this, a lot of people, and I, I saw this in recent race there, a lot of people are nervous about cutoff times, and they put themselves in a higher swim corral because they think they're giving themselves an advantage. That's 100% wrong. 
because your time only starts when you're across the mat, which will be at the start of the swim start. So it doesn't matter if you put yourself in the 30 minute corral or you put yourself in the 50 minute corral. It's your time, your chip time only starts when you cross that mat. Back to what have you said, be honest, set yourself up for a good day. Okay, so we can also see, <coughs> excuse me, at the top of the hills, which is standard arm and fair, they tip, they have the, they normally have their aid stations because they don't obviously want to put a descent because it's hard to catch up. So we'll talk a little bit about aid stations. Now, for those also new to Ironman racing, this is very particularly Ironman, and this is one of the best parts of the day, where remember you're doing your long bikes and you're sort of worrying about how much food I'm going to bring. In our, you will have at least four aid stations on the bike course where you have a buffet of food. You've got the option for cold water bottles, etc. And this is how they typically work. The key thing you have to note off first off is, is you can only drop your rubbish or trash if we're Americans listen to this at the start and the end of an aid station. If you drop it anywhere else, you're being a dick and you'll get you get disqualified. So remember, we are guests in a beautiful country that is Spain. Don't be a dick. I'm gonna get t-shirt printed up on that. Um the and then in the in the aid stations, a typical flow of them, as in you will have an option where there'll be volunteers holding out bottles of water where you have to come in, slow down, grab the bottle of water and swap it in. And um, there's also an isotonic drink. In Europe, it is precision hydration. Um, in America, it's mortal hydration and they have weird flavors. But don't worry about it. Morton gels, fruits, typically chopped up banana, et cetera, because they're easier to hand out. And there's, again, an option for an isotonic drink and for water again. And again, if, you, if you've got your options here, if, you, if your water bottle, they've emptied one water bottle, time to chuck it at the end of the aid station because it makes it nice and easy for the volunteers to actually collect all the bottles and keep the place tidy afterwards. And for God's sake, say thank you and smile at your volunteers. These guys are giving up the time to allow you race. Now, there's myself and Javier could talk about RM and aid stations. A very specific way of doing these things to make sure you're safe and all the rest and your, and your fellow competitors are safe. So we could go on about exactly how to do this, but rather than do that and keep this video nice and focused, there's a video in the comments below. So make sure you check that out. It shows you all the etiquette you need to do, key things that you need to practice, and all that so you will actually make sure you're in out of the bike aid stations safe and secure and um, any tips on or any other things you'd like to add there about aid stations javier especially <coughs> especially for for that triathlon for the aid station as the first one is on top on the first climb it's like if you want to save some uh weight on the climb on the uphill you don't have to carry the three water bottles just once let's say and when you climb then you can pick whatever you want and just enjoy the extra way for the downhill brilliant absolutely fantastic tip and <clears throat> we saw that in when we did ironman cork there's this big was it heartbreak hill and all the rest and what i what i laughed at when i was watching some of the guys do it the year before they were going up with three full water bottles on it and the two rear bottles and i went that's that's a very steep hill and they're up and there's an aid station at the top and they're carrying the water for it. And these are guys who have spent a fortune on these really light carbon frame bikes. And I went, you just double the weight of the bike. So yes, 100%. Minimize then the, the amount of bottles for the first 20K. Brilliant. That's a really good tip. And then just load up when you're in the aid station. Fantastic. Love it. Okay. So now, again, you've made your descent. You've come in and you've stood up. You've spun out your legs a little. Now you're coming into T2, which is the same area. You'll come to your dismount line. Again, these, that's another landmark you should check out beforehand. And then you'll be coming in to pick up your red. You'll, you'll bring your bike. You'll bring it back to the racking point. And it is the same location where your number is racked. And then you'll head off to pick up your red bag. Um, red bags are your bike to run. So literally, this is where you put your helmet in the bike, or your helmet in. And you'll put on your runners. And then you'll take out whatever you need, be it sunglasses, be it your cap, um, and then it, it was additional Morton gels, etc. And then you head out on the run. What's your top tips for transition to Javier? What do you tell your guys to do? It's like uh, to, to uh, as I have stated before with the swimming on the last part of the <clears throat> bike leg. It's like try to remember all the things that are coming up. 
because it really makes a difference. It's kind of seen weird, but it's really it really makes a difference. Um, just uh, visualize what you are going to do. Um, if you have prepared beforehand the running suit, uh, for instance, with some tall powder, that it will prevent from having some blister at the end of the day. Um, that uh, is a, a tip that I usually highlight very much to my athletes. Yeah, no, big time. I'm a big fan of talcum powder and the run as well. I also tell my guys, chain socks in T1 and T2, as in, yes, you may lose 10, 15 seconds putting on socks. But as you said, blisters are our biggest fear in on the run, as in that will turn a half marathon into a very painful walk if you've got a blister all day. So I, I, I'm a fan of actually putting on socks in transition. Um, <clears throat> I also, I'm a big fan of having, of my one of my athletes has this phrase and I've, I've lived by it ever since he said, he said nothing good happens in transition to he said just get in put the bike get your red bag and just start moving as in so he says like all you need to is put your runners on anything else you carry with you carry your cap carry your shades and start running towards the the run exit put the cap on when you're moving put your sunglasses on because at that stage you will have covered two three hundred meters and you're actually you're moving, your legs are moving, that it, it, it just getting into that rhythm. Um, so yes, and again, back to your point again, I love it as in start thinking about the actions that you need to complete. Okay, where do I, I need to dismount here? I need to run up, I take a left here. I remember where my, my, where my bike rack is coming from that direction. Where's the red bag? What do I need to do? I need to take my helmet off first, etc. Visualizing it, thinking it through, makes it real smooth, excellent. So, oops, I, I probably should have got rid of that. That's our transition too. And um, so now we'll talk a bit about our the run course. And um, two loops looks flat. And um, what's the feedback on the course, mate? Yeah, definitely, it's, it's really flat. Uh, it's uh, two loops. It's uh, by the time that you uh, start the the running leg. Uh, people will be on uh, cheering you and there is some tourists that maybe they are not knowing what is happening but anyway we'll cheer you <laughs> and it's uh, a mix of concrete uh, some compact sand um, the most tricky part let's say it's a suspension bridge with a wooden floor that you will definitely feel some motion sickness but it's nothing that you have to be worried about but it's just for for some minutes um uh, in in the course it state that is going to be two loops completely the same but in other years and i have been told that this year but i'm not sure that maybe you can enter the the harbor where the red water is and okay. do like uh, and it's like going to one side then back then do the whole loop and then again but it's not on the on the map but let's say if uh, it's not definite uh i think and um, maybe on the few uh, upcoming weeks they are going to update it or not it depends yeah so and in terms of the the hard sand do you recommend any different type of runners or you like if someone's going to use a carbon plated runner do you, are you will that work or any advice on that uh, 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 uh yeah, normal suit will, will uh, do the trick. Uh, I have been uh, questioned sometimes. It's like, do I have to wear a trail running suit? And it's no. It's only that your fancy white carbon suit is going to be covered on dust, but nothing to be worried about. Yeah, cool, excellent. So if you're, again, back to that uh, kind of original point as well. Train, training what you're uh, racing, what you've trained in. Nothing new on race day. So like. Uh, yeah, suddenly, like, and you will have these guys will turn up. They see a bit of sand, they go, wow, I'll buy, I'll buy trail shoes. And they'll be the guys who will end up with the blisters. And the other thing as well, there seems to be an absolute load of aid stations as well. And again, one of the tips I give my guys, never miss an aid station, especially when you're actually on the on the half marathon part of a 70.3. And um, and even if it's a case of your it's all your overall nutrition strategy or if it's getting very hot you need it for heat management pouring a bit of water down the back of your neck pouring it down the front of your tricuit to keep your core temperature down and um, rinsing out your mouth with a bit of isotonic will help and again 
don't overdo the liquids because a lot of people think I need to keep my core temperature down by pouring lots of water in. You just get very sloshy. You're better off pouring it in your body and allow that to sweat, the sweat then to kind of take the heat off you. What sort of temperatures typically will they people expect to be on the run course? Um, will it be hot uh, in October? That is, the first, that is the first year that you're going to be on October, but uh, in that area of Spain is is expected to be quite hot, especially on those uh, time of the day that you have swim, bike, uh, and now is you are running. It's like maybe five year five uh, hours later the the, the start. So it's, it's going to be definitely uh, hot for, for the standard European. Yeah, absolutely. For us, white Irish, a very pasty white Irish guys, we always burn up. That's when all the Spaniards overtake us on the run. Um, but okay, cool. So yeah, as I said, and again, in terms of pacing, what I always tell my guys as well is what you want to do in terms of your first 5K of this run, you do not want to be setting any BBs there. Ease yourself into the run, break it up into four by 5K chunks, and therefore really slow almost feel like you're holding yourself back for the first 5k and then start hitting your race pace efforts which you would have done in your long runs and your bricks from five to it was it from five to ten ten to fifteen and then the last 7k it's always going to suck a little bit and that's where you kind of have to deep deep dive deep into your kind of mental toughness well and um, any other tips on the on the on the run course Javier? Uh, especially for for the newbies, is a, a tip that usually I tell to my athletes is like, don't uh, try to get uh, tired. Let's say because pacing uh, really hard. Because don't worry, at the end of the of the half marathon, tiredness is going to catch you. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. Excellent. Um, okay, so cool. So that again, and just in terms of the overall, you've got the time to get it done. You've got. For swim, T1, T2, bike, and run, you've got eight and a half hours to do it um, for those nerves about cutoffs. Um, but it looks like that run is nice and flat and all the rest. And if you've paced that bike well, if you've fueled well, you should be getting there well within uh, that cutoff time. And um, this is the finish line. Now, again, this is in April, so, it was, so I, I presume it still be as bright, but it looks an, an absolute beautiful course. Um, there's going to be loads of people on it this year. As I said, everyone's going to sneak preview of the 703 World Course next year. So that's what you need to look at. That's what you need to think about. Visualize this when it does get tough uh, in terms of the, as Javier says, when the, your tiredness is chasing you, as in start thinking about the finish line, think about celebrating your family and your friends afterwards, think about the why you got into this race, why you took on such a monumental challenge. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit of just some other considerations. We'll talk a bit about the race timetable when, again, we'll get some more hints and tips from Javier there. Um, we've mentioned some key things about, you know, fueling, hydration, etc. And if you get that wrong in a 7.3, it becomes a very, very long day. So there's a video, and that's a whole topic in itself, but there's a video in the comments below. Um, what you're going to pack, how you're going to get prepared for, especially if it's your new, uh, your first Ironman um, 7.3. A video on how to pack and what to pack and a handy downloadable checklist. Tapering, this is the time when myself, Javier, as coaches, we really earn our money. We get lots of emails and WhatsApp from people, our athletes, thinking that they're losing fitness, they're getting sick. They're not. It's just taper madness. We talk about some hints and tips how to handle that. And then some things that you should start thinking before October where you're going to, when you are tapering a bit of time, making sure you got logistics, reading the athlete brief, as in um, getting your bike service. So just tips there. All those videos and comments below, all to make your life easier. Okay, so the race timetable. Um, Friday and it was a Saturday, you have the option of registering. Um, do you give any advice to your guys about when to register, Javier? Uh that they are not in a hurry guys with plenty of time to because usually uh, always a last minute uh, issues arise and just when you receive uh, all the swing cab or whatever just check that everything is on inside and that the number matches each other yes no absolutely and again, yeah, so I'm, I'm the same. I get, I actually, especially if you're traveling from Ireland or whatever, like, so to get, 
get there a few days early because if, if you're putting bikes on planes, you're putting bags on planes, things can get lost, things can go wrong. You prepared for this race for the last six months. You don't want to try arriving on the on the sat or first thing on a Saturday morning and your bike gets lost. You want to arrive in maybe on the third Wednesday, Thursday, make a holiday of it. There's always great atmosphere at the 70.3 events. Um, there's a lot. What I'm loving here is you can see a bike service and info point. So if something has happened to your bike, um, like as I said, the derailleur got damaged or it's punctured, etc. If you arrive there early, you've got loads of time to either find a local bike shop, get there and get it sorted. But I guarantee you that queue will get longer and longer closer it comes to Saturday evening. So you don't want to turn up with a with your bike and it's sort of your, your handlebars are misaligned. You went, can you fix this? And it said, join the queue. And um, there's also some briefings in English, briefings in Spanish. Do attend them because as Javier pointed out, the Ironman has can change things at the last minute if, depending on the um on something that just might have happened in terms of uh, on the course, etc. So you want to be 100 percent appraised of that. Um, the other thing that you'll notice there, you check in your bike and your bags in the transition area on the Saturday before the race between uh, two and six. And I tell my guys to do it later in the day. Now, this is dangerous on a video where 2,000 people are going to start doing it. And the Ironman might give out to me because I, I, I don't like leaving my bike out as long, uh, too long in the sun, etc. But I think sometimes the Ironman will give you designated check-in points. And that's when you hang your bags on the on the rack on the blue bag on the rack and your red bag on the rack and it's heavy eight point that's when you walk the course and you come back anything else you give to your guys any other last minute trans uh, was it setup tips and um, that you get your guys to do have you it's like i have a steady double check that everything is in place that again visualize for the following day so uh not only the where your bike is but uh, everything that you will need is on place that everything is uh, on your backs and just like uh, doing the transition on your mind and checking that everything is inside the bag no absolutely and again i'm gonna st i'm gonna give my tip again where i not only i get guys to take a photograph of where the bike is where the um where their where the run exit is etc what you put in your blue bag and your red bag take a picture of it because then you're you're lying down in your hotel bed and you go like did I put my sunglasses in in the red bag? Did I put my sun and then you sort of go running around the house looking for it, and you lose a lot of mental energy, and it's stressful. But you go, hang on, let me. I have a picture. Oh, there they are in the bag, so that's good. And um, so this is why I'm, maybe I should start selling Apple phones as well, uh, iPhones as well. And um, and the key tip as well I give my guys is you will have access to your bike and your bags on the morning of the race. Transition area will open at six. So do not put your food out. Do not put your, 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 your drinks on it. Do not put your bike computer on it. Keep them, bring them nice and cold in the morning and then don't have them on the bike in case was it insects want to go have it, eat your energy bars. So you can do them in the first thing in the morning. And But that also put that part of your checklist as in get the bike, check the tires are okay, check no one's bumped it overnight, put on the water bottles. Right reset the computer calibrate the pedals la 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 that's whatever you do normally um the also and as uh have they mentioned earlier you've got the option of a swim warm-up take advantage of that that's brilliant it gives you an idea about what the water temperature is what the what it's going to look like on race morning and um, and then get to your corral nice and eat nice and early so you're not waiting any other tips mate for our our, our newbies heading off to marbella uh for instance uh they have a parking lot that is they create the parking lot for for the event that is five to ten minutes walking so if you uh, arrive to the area really early on the morning let's say six or so you don't have you can just park not that far and you can just walk uh, until the the transition zone fantastic Great tip. And again, that's uh, logistics are all the kind of the, what people really worry about on race morning. You have all the training done you know, or just ready to get going. But that's a really good logistical tip. And um, OK, so in terms of your start, you'll be uh, quarter to eight and then you're going off. And um, again, that rolling swim start that Javier and myself discussed there. Make sure you put yourself in the right corral. Make sure you pace yourself well. Make sure you enjoy the race. The, I tell my athletes is 
racing is the reward for all the hard work make sure you again as javier said check out the views on your bike don't just be staring at the wheel and so on your garmin computer going wow and then you sort of go you're at the top of some absolutely stunning climbs in marbella make sure you take in mental pictures high five kids on the run talk to your competitors have a bit of fun it's it is a great day out for you um okay so that's i think all we have and what i just wanted to wrap this up with is an a absolute million thanks or gracias as they say in spain to uh, my new friend and um, javier for all the really cool information and the insight he's given to the course i strongly recommend that you check him out in terms of his website and his email he's a good guy not only marbella guys as in this this guy will get you a pb in the was it victoria gastez barcelona mallorca as in, he's an absolute great guy. I've talked to him a few times at this stage. He knows his stuff. You can tell that from what he's talking about. You can tell he was at his, his and he's a he's a very good coach. So he's also more than happy if you want to email him um, at the Javier uh, I'm missing the at, but I'm going to put this the actual correct link to the uh, to the uh, email in the comments below as well. Please do check him out. Javier, any last minute words for our ner nervous newbies? Yes, that they enjoy the the experience. It's like as you have stated, it's a reward for for the last maybe six months of hard training. So you try to sink in every tiny detail of the route, of the landscape, and and the atmosphere. Absolutely. And then when you do well in Marbella, you come back to Harry next year and actually get a PB. As and so this is this is just, this and uh, while you enjoy your day race, they enjoy your moment on the red carpet. I guarantee you'll be looking to register again and uh, check out Javier for that next PB. But otherwise, guys, absolutely thank you very much for watching. Do like, subscribe to the channel and check out from uh, the if you're looking for other race reviews. And um, if you share with your friends, if you think this will help. Um, myself, Javier, are delighted to help people join our crazy, crazy, wonderful community of triathletes and Ironmen and all the rest to make sure you have an absolute uh, was it super race day experience. So that's a goodbye from us.